What's cracking everybody, there, Felrose here, bringing you some Pokemon Go Battle League content. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an awesome Shoutcast in the Master League, dusting off that Spice Rack, getting an XL level 50 Mew into the Master League here from my buddy B. Richley, also on Twitch as B. Richley Plays. Master League Specialist for Rock, Paper, Slark, good friend of mine, and he is going to be giving us this shoutcast today. Thank you very much for the battle submission, my brother, and we are going to see what this Master League Mew is all about. And if you would like to submit some battles to the channel for shoutcasting, you can do so by checking out the link in the pinned description in the comment. Or pinned comment and description, goodness. So we got Ice Beam on this Mew, and B. Richley goes straight for the Ice Beam, not messing around, going to eat this Stone Edge, and this is going to be... Dude, if this thing doesn't get shielded, I'm going to be out of my mind right now, okay? We, oh my goodness, I don't have the button ready. No, kaboom. No, they don't shield. Okay, you know what? The Landorus takes it, and they know. They're like, dude, there's no way this guy's staying in if he doesn't have a way to one-shot my Landorus. So, as I look for the button yet again, my friends, we see this matchup play out. The Mew is going to go for the Ice Beam. I'm wondering what is preventing the swapping out. I guess, well, I guess, yeah, that makes sense. There's uh, <laughs> there's two dragons in the back, so we don't really have an answer to a Zacian in the back. So Mew is going to have to deal with it. But the Mew is going to get hit with a wild charge with no HP. This must be a double nuke Mew. All right, I've got the button ready. It's okay. Close combat does a lot of damage, and I've got the button ready. We're here once again in the Master League with this Mew, and now the, Thari the, 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 the Therian Landorus comes back in, and man, B. Richley was really hoping to try and get rid of this thing before. Now it's going to just be a pain. But with double superpowers going off, we're kind of hoping to see a farm down potentially superpower is going to get through this Dialga, and Zekrom is going to come in to try and get that farm down and almost gets it, and then there's a Yvettel in the back. Wild Charge is here, and we do not have Fusion Bolt, so maxing out on energy, looking to go for it, and the Wild Charge here is going to do so much damage as the opponent respect it they do they shield up and now be richly has a choice to make does he no shield he lets the dark pulse through what a call dude what a call now the question is, is does that landers have a move nope doesn't matter because the dragon breath takes it out and that's going to be a good game well played missed the transition man am i bad at this today <laughs> we get a Dialga lead, and you can't really get out of this because if you switch into your own Dialga, they are going to be able to get ahead on energy by one turn and outpace you to whatever move. And then obviously, Zekrom just taking super effective damage. No bueno. So, Dragon Claw, the flurry of Dragon Claws has commenced. No reason to go for Ice Beam. Both moves are neutral here. Going to shield up that Iron Head. The opponent is respecting a potential Focus Blast from this Mew, and we're going to go for it again. Do we get shield number two? The opponent double shielding, respecting Mew, just to find out that there's just Dragon Claw and Ice Beam on this thing. <laughs> Ice Beam is going to come through and do some extra damage to this Mewtwo before Dialga comes in to likely just Dragon Breath down the whole Mewtwo and get a Draco Meteor ready for whatever comes back in. Because that Draco Meteor is basically going to one-shot or near one-shot most of the meta at this point. So we are going to see this Mewtwo get to another move. B. Richley re respecting that potential Focus Blast, but it's just an Ice Beam on the Mewtwo, and now we're going to see Dialga launch a Meteor at the Dialga that comes back in. What's in the back? We're going to have to wait and see. Probably a Giratina, if I had to guess, just because I... Okay, no, it's a Kyogre. I was expecting just something that didn't like Dialga. That's That would make a lot of sense as to why it wouldn't want to come in, but opponent is going to be able to get to a move here right before Dialga gets to that Draco Meteor, and then they're just going to be really sad to see the Zekrom is in the back, and they're probably going to concede at this point. There it is. Good game. Well played. Getting into the next game. Yeah, I was on point with that transition there that time. Ooh, we've got some spice of Shadow Charizard in the Master League here. Charizard getting OP with that Wing Attack update and is now just going to go ham in all three leagues, Master League included. Dragon Claw is going to do some decent chip damage to this Charizard, but a Blast Burn would still hurt like... I mean, I'm not going to say it, but you know what it is. Blast Burn does not do enough damage to KO, and the opponent catches the Dragon Claw on their own Dialga. Now, this is a dangerous situation here. You might have to go into your own Dialga because the opponent being down HP means that you will be able to guarantee switch advantage and lock in your Zekrom onto the opponent's Charizard. 
But not that Mew's got much left to say about it in the first place, so we'll just have to see how B. Richley handles the situation because he does shield the Iron Head, a potential Draco Meteor, but because of the HP lost on the opponent's Dialga, he's not going to be able to get to another charge move and is going to go down with almost an Iron Head loaded. Now B. Richley, with a couple of moves, is going to have to throw this Iron Head here at the Charizard. Opponent might not even shield this. They just let it go, but an Iron Head from Dialga is still enough to take it out. And here comes a Zekrom. Going to get to that Draco Meteor without... No, he's going to go down with a Draco Meteor. But with one shield, Zekrom most likely is going to be able to farm down the opponent's Zekrom. Looking for that catch, but doesn't get it. Going to have to shield up here. The opponent having a little bit of extra farm. Going for that Fusion Bolt bait. And now they're going to get farmed down because they just don't have the energy for the next move. So that's going to be a good game. Getting into the next one, we've got a Grout on an actual target for the Ice Beam, and you absolutely don't want to see that against your backline. So, very good call here. This must be why the Ice Beam is on here, just because we don't want to deal with Grout on. Opponent might even go for a Fire Punch bait here. Thinking about it, goes for the Shield instead. Fire Punch does suck, but the opponent is going to have to go. Uh, they have to call a Shield or not here. The opponent shields right back, and now B. Richley goes straight for the Ice Beam, and the Ice Beam is going to do a pretty good chunk of super effective damage to this Groudon, and is going to leave it within Dragon Claw range at this point. The Mew is happy to go down, given that it landed the Ice Beam, and the opponent's going for another Fire Punch bait. B. Richley's not having it. He is going to go up to another Dragon Claw, force the opponent to throw their energy. Is this the Precipice Blades? Yes, it is. Mew is going to go down down to a opponent having absolutely no energy on their Groudon. And then you come in with the Ho-Oh, or against the Ho-Oh with the Zekrom, and I, you don't call this Earthquake. You just know they don't have Earthquake anymore. They have Sacred Fire, and that is all that needs to be known. Now, unfortunately, that attack drop does mean that B. Richley is going to have to throw here, and he's going to go for the Wild Charge to KO the rest of this Ho-Oh, and the opponent probably going to come back in with that Groudon to try and get to a move, but or get to a farm down. It's going to be dangerous, though, because even though B. Richley's got himself into a bit of a tizzy here, to go out of tizzy, with uh, that defense drop, going to be able to farm down the Groudon and potentially get that shield back with a wild charge against whatever's in the back, and it's a Lugia, and Dialga's going to be able to come in and clean this game up real nice, resisting the sky attack and arrow blast damage, all that this... Uh, all the Dialga has to do really here is get to a Draco Meteor, and that's pretty much the game, I do believe. So, waiting for the opponent to throw their charge move. I think we're just trying to get it down into Draco Meteor range here. B. Richley probably knows where that is better than I do, so I know he's probably farming down just to get to that point. And right before he goes down, he's going to go for that Draco Meteor, giving the opponent a slight sliver of hope and taking it away just as fast. That Draco Meteor is going to KO that Lugia, and that's a good game. All right, we got the next game here. It's going to be another Dialga lead. Dialga is on just about every team in the Master League. So if you're looking to play in the Master League, you've got to be ready for it. And B. Richley's strategy here against it is to go for a potential Focus Blast, or what could be a Focus Blast here, against this Dialga. Now, the opponent, I don't think eight Shadow Claws is enough, is it? Nine? Maybe nine is. No, because nine Psy Shocks is enough for a Focus Blast. I don't know. Man, uh, he's getting shields, and that's all that matters. So Dragon Claw is going to come through once again. Opponent's going to let this one go. Re willing to just let the damage come through. I think at this point, you just go for the back-to-back -back Dragon Claws and let you go down. Come in with your own Dialga and possibly just mow down the rest of the Dialga in front of you. And then hope that whatever's in the back goes down to Zekrom. You just kind of hope so. Go and get in for that snipe. Getting in there with that snipe, and it's a Lugia in the back. And you know that the opponent does not have a solid answer at this point if they come in with a Lugia onto this Dialga. Going to go for this Iron Head, most likely. No, he's straight sending the Draco Meteor, forcing the opponent to make a hard decision, and they go for the shield here to protect this Lugia. And Lugia just needs to go now for an Arrow Blast, and that's going to take out the Dialga. But if they go for the Sky Attack, it's not going to be enough, and Dialga definitely gets to a move at this point be richly hanging on and getting to that but uh drag <laughs> going for the draco meteor to take it out and we're going to see that there's a kyogre in the back and the opponent is about to be a very sad trainer as they concede the match to the zach rom well played getting into the next game another dialga lead did i just play the same game over and over again is this dialga in every game yes it is because it's master league all right dialga is going to be once again, probably going to see the same thing. One key that you are going to see from high-level players here on just about anywhere, you're going to see consistency. Be Richly always goes up and farms up to almost three Dragon Claws. Okay, so we went to three, not two. Going for that Focus Blast. 
potentially. The opponent does not respect it. I almost think he should just put Focus Blast on this thing, to be honest. I really do. Focus Blast Ice Beam. What could go wrong with that moveset, right? What, what, what could go wrong with that moveset? The opponent is deciding not to shield or respect anything. So going for the Ice Beam to win Switch here on the lead. The opponent comes in with the Hello. That is a Zacian, and then that's a Galarian Zapdos. I have the utmost respect for this trainer. I love Galarian Zapdos. I have one for Ultra League, and every time I use it, I get smashed. I would love to get one for uh, for Ultra League, though, or for Master League, no, I'm sorry. But we're going to have to see, because this is a very difficult game, given that the opponent has, <laughs> has this bird, and all that we have left here at this point is a Zekrom, and all that we can do here is get for a nicely timed swap to catch a move here you're gonna have to no he's not gonna respect the potential close combat the opponent goes for the close combat and has just shambles man this zacian is not ready for these wild charges this wild charge no you have to wait for the move to fire off the opponent is just gonna go for a bunch of farm here the energy they're just looking to go for as much energy they're very happy to just go ahead and let this go now it's this is the question. Is this going to be the move? Because the opponent is without shields. They go for the player off the safe play. B. Richley's going to go for the wild charge, and that Snarl's going to KO. And unfortunately, I don't see a win condition for him here at this point. Unless this Mew can get the farm down, which it almost does. Can Zekrom come in and get those Dragon Breaths off to take out the Zacian? That's going to be the question. The opponent can't get to the move. Whoa, my goodness. That was a good game. Wow. That was nuts, dude. All right, we got a Mammal Swine, Shadow Mammal Swine in the last game here. Going up to enough energy. I don't know yet. We're still farming up. But B. Richley's going to let this Avalanche go through. That's going to do a lot of damage to this poor little Mew. And we're going to see him go back up to that Focus Blast, or what would closely be a Focus Blast, to potentially threaten shields off of the Mammal Swine. Because you're running a Mew, your opponent never knows what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates, man. And you're going to see Dragon Claws flying out. The opponent's shield again. And then you're going to see them get to take this Dragon Claw. But the opponent makes a catch on their Dialga. And once again, just like we saw before, folks, Dialga is going to be able to come in here with a shield to shield advantage and farm down and that is going to make it so that it leaves with the iron head to be able to take out the mammal swine as well when it comes in now if that mammal swine had a move loaded it's going to mean that dialga is going to have to use its final shield in order to get that move off so we're going to see what happens as the opponent probably waits out their switch timer here and then brings in either their third oh he sends in the giratina and we're gonna see the draco meteor where's my button Dude, I don't care what kind of Giratina it is. That's worthy of a Kaboom. And then you're going to get to the Iron Head. The opponent doesn't even get to see the Zekrom in the back. And that's going to be a good game. Very well played, B. Richley. Taking out that Mammal Swine with the Iron Head. And that's that. Thank you all so much for tuning into this one. That was a great set of battles with a Master League Mew. And B. Richley also does his own Master League coaching. Um... I don't know if he has a specific place for it, but I will try to link his Twitch channel in the description so that you can go and ask him yourself next time he goes live. So with that, I'll leave it there, and thank you all so much for watching, and you have a good one. Bye-bye.